What's up guys? Today we're going to be building a Stratocaster pickup. So this is going to be a late 50s, early 60s, or what I call a, a Kennedy Stratocaster pickup. Uh, so we're using 42 gauge heavy build form VAR wire. It has this rich coppery color. The flat work is black. You can buy these online. They're pre-cut. They're laser cut out of this uh, vulcanized fiberboard material that's really strong. Uh, we've got our Alnico 5 pole pieces of varying heights. We're also going to be putting a base plate on this pickup, uh, like what I would do on a, strat on a, a bridge position Stratocaster pickup. There's our cover there, and the finished product will look a lot like this. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is hand bevel our pole pieces, like this one here. Uh, it just gives it a nice rounded look. Uh, looks vintage. Uh, it's something they used to do in the Fender factory uh, in the 50s. Uh, they used to hand bevel the magnets. And uh, it does change the magnetic field, so essentially it does change the tone a little bit. But mostly I just do it for good looks. And uh, these are all Alnico 5. Uh, they used Alnico 3 in the very early uh, Stratocaster pickups and switched to Alnico 5 at some point. I really like Alnico 5 um, because it has a really strong bass response. You get a little bit more output out of them, and it just sounds like the quintessential Stratocaster tone to me. So to bevel these poles, uh, I'm going to use a Dremel tool and uh, I've just got a sanding wheel here, a grinding wheel, and I've got a second one that has some 800 grit sandpaper um, with double-sided foam tape attached to the, the grinding wheel. So basically we're just going to shape it with this one and then we're going to polish it with this one here. You're going to want to use a dust mask and safety glasses to do this. I'm going to switch to my polishing one. And I want to mention these are unmagnetized. Uh, it'd be a lot harder to do this if these were magnetized because they would stick to this blade. They'd get shavings all over them. So we're using a drill press with the jaws closed to press in the magnets into this uh, bobbin here. So um, the first one we'll be putting in is the 0.671 inch pole. I just have this tool I made out of wood to sort of hold the pole piece in place. Another 0.671. A string 0.710 inch for the D string, another 0.710 for the G string, and also uh, I want to mention I have the part of the eyelet that sticks out a little bit that's on the bottom of the pickup where the coil is not going to be, so the top is smooth. 0 0.630 for the B string. and a 0 .650 for the high E. Now we're going to put this top piece on. Just set it, press it in a little bit. Just a piece of wood to protect the bobbin from getting smashed. Get these side ones started since they're shorter. Uh, these spacers are 0.430 inches, just 
just so that the coil is exactly the same for every pickup. This piece of wood, I just glued three pieces of wood together just sort of to uh, set the tops and in one motion. All done. And the last thing that we're gonna do to build this bobbin is we're gonna pot it in some lacquer, some brushing lacquer. And that does two things. The first thing that it does is it insulates the coil wire from the magnets because if there's a break in the insulator, then uh, it's gonna short out on the poles and uh, it also helps to hold the bobbin together so it's real strong kind of glues it all together so we'll just use a piece of wire something to hang it on just dip it in there completely let it drain off and then I'll just hang this to dry for about 24 hours or overnight. All right, so the lacquer is dry on the bobbin. Um, I'm just feeling around here for rough edges. Um, you can just sand that off with a little bit of sandpaper just so it doesn't get caught, so the wire doesn't get caught. And there's still some lacquer in these eyelets, so I'll just punch those out with a point. Here's the form var wire and this is going to go on the floor. So we're going to wind this clockwise. So I'll feed it through this eyelet here and we'll feed that through about three times. Just a little bit of solder on there to hold it in place. And trim off the excess. And we'll stick this on this side. And I'm going to start with about 10 winds just to get this bobbin started. I don't remember what the last pickup was that I wound on here, so. I'm just going to set the guides, I'm just going to eyeball it. The guides seem pretty close there, so I'm going to go a few hundred winds and just see how it looks. Looks pretty good. So like I said before, this is my Kennedy strap pickup. It's a late 50s, early 60s strap pickup. And uh, this uses the form var wire, uh, just like the old ones, as opposed to the plain enamel wire. Um, in 1964, CBS purchased Fender and they changed the way uh, that they did a lot of things there, but they changed the way that they made the pickups. So um, instead of using a hand-guided process, they started using a machine to wind pickups. And um, the hand-guided process, like I'm doing here, is the true way to get a scatter-wound pickup. And it lowers the capacitance, makes the pickup more open and bright. 
Um, so, yeah, pickups from the late 60s, early 70s don't sound bad, but they're just a little different. And um, so the winding process is a major difference. Uh, also, the wire, uh, like I said, this is form bar. It's heavy build, 42 gauge wire. So um, the sound that you get from these is you get a really full, round, low end. And uh, the highs are also nice and rounded. They're not harsh or anything. It's just a really full sounding pickup. A little bit of scooped mids. Um, you know, it's an ideal set for blues. And uh, the plain enamel wire uh, just sounds a little bit different. Um, it's actually what I use for most of my other pickups. I only use form bar for strap pickups and a couple of tele pickups and that's it but it's a really great looking and sounding wire. I'm just going to check my winds real quick. Looks good, it's a little bit light in the middle so I'm going to try to make my process a little more even. Go a little slower in the middle and then faster around the top and bottom. So I'm gonna do about 7,600 winds on this pickup. Um, the old pickups, uh, they made the bridge, middle, and neck all exactly the same. So, same number of turns, same winding direction. They were just cranking them out. Sometimes you'd even find a hotter pickup in the neck position. But they're all around like 5.7K. You know, some are as hot as 6.2 or a little bit higher. But um, they're all averaging about 5.7. And I found that 7,600 turns is the magic number for that, for that output. Uh, today, we wind bridge pickups 10 to 15% hotter, and uh, that's because the string vibrates less far close to the bridge. Uh, that's why your neck pickup is always louder, because the string is vibrating farther, and uh, your waveform is getting bigger. And another thing we do with modern strat sets is put a re reverse wound, reverse polarity pickup in the middle. That will cancel hum in the second and fourth position. Um, for me, that's not really something I use a whole lot. I mean, when I'm playing a strat, I'm either on the bridge or the neck. And uh, it's very rare that I use the, the second or the fourth, or even the middle position. but everyone's different with their playing style. All right, 7620, that's about all the turns that'll fit on here. I'm just doing the last turns close to the bottom so that I can solder the wire onto the eyelet. Tape down the end, cut the wire. I'm going to loop the end through the eyelet just like I did with the beginning. I'm going to heat up the eyelet a little bit. Put some solder in there. Now, if you're testing the resistance and you're not getting a reading, it's just because the solder hasn't burned through the insulator on the wire, so I'm just gonna hold that on there a little bit longer. So that is 5.8. Uh, once it cools down, it's also a really hot day, that'll probably cool down to about 5.7. I'm gonna solder my leads on. Black goes to the start, that's negative. And either yellow or white goes to the finish. And these just get pushed through here. Here we go. 
You can also twist the leads together. In theory, that should help block any uh, any extra noise that's trying to come in and get into the circuit. Cell phones, radio signals, that kind of thing. We're gonna charge up our poles now, and the easiest way to do that is with a rare earth magnet. You can get these um, from guitar repair places online. It has a north side and a south side, and you can use a compass to tell what it's going to create when the pole passes by it. So it's gonna create the opposite, so the north side of the magnet is attracting the south needle that's gonna create a south pole. So we'll put that here. We've got another one. This is gonna create north. These pickups are gonna be south up. So we're gonna run these through the vise just so it's touching a little bit. So run that through a couple times. I can measure it with this meter here. It's very strong, it's south. And the other side should be north. So it's fully charged up at this point. So I'm gonna spread these jaws apart. About four inches, five inches. And run it through the opposite direction, not touching either of the magnets, but just running it through Let's see what that gives me. 25. Move these jaws a little closer. Run it through again. It's still pretty high. So Alnico 5 is a really good sounding magnet, especially for strap pickups. Um, it's a little strong, so it's good to knock it down to like 15 to 20 gauss. That's where it's at now. So that's a good reading. That won't be too harsh and that'll kind of round the highs a bit. I'm also going to put a base plate on the bottom of this pickup. Um, that's kind of like what Telecasters have and it helps boost the output. Um, it's something I like to, to do on a bridge pickup because it will um, help balance the output with the neck and middle since these are all wound uh, pretty much the same output. Um, you know, you pretty much just fill up the bobbin on these things and you're done. Since the black negative wire is connected to the base plate, um, the base plate will help to insulate the pickup from, you know, radio signals and noise. Uh, so it'll, it'll be a little quieter too. All right, that's it. From there, you can wax pot this pickup. Uh, that'll help hold the base plate on the bottom a little bit better. Uh, you can you can leave it unpotted like that. Um, but if you're interested in wax potting, um, go ahead and consult my wax potting video here on YouTube. So that's the Stratocaster pickup build. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and like and comment on the video if uh, you want to see anything different or any t different types of videos in the future. Uh, so thanks for watching Scaladine Pickups and come again.